My name is Lauren Cranmer, and today we're talking about my breast cancer journey. And not the whole thing, because that thing could be like a hundred part video, but today we're specifically talking about how I found my breast cancer, but didn't know I had cancer till about six months later, when I was pregnant, seven weeks. So needless to say, there's a lot to talk about. Way back in the beginning, I chose to breastfeed my son and I breastfed him for 18 months. And 18 months is, for me was a really long time. My experience with breastfeeding was initially like extremely hard. There was like physical barriers and mental barriers and it was really hard at first to commit to breastfeeding. I almost stopped, but then I pushed through, I hung tight and it, honestly, it was the best decision. And I had a really good experience overall breastfeeding and it was really hard to choose to wean my son. I stopped breastfeeding 18 months. It was September 2nd of 2020. And then two weeks later, because it was also in September of 2020, I found my lump. Now, when I say lump, I don't mean like this noticeable, like obvious thing. It was purely on accident that I found this thing. I wasn't doing a self exam. I wasn't checking my breasts. I was playing with my son and we were roughhousing a little bit. He he jumped into me and I it hurt my chest in a different kind of way. Like not like where he hit me too hard, but where I just, I noticed something was wrong. That in it of itself led me to feel my chest. So it felt around and I noticed a little tiny lump and it was so tiny and it was so hard though. And like, I almost thought I was making it up. I, ha I felt it a hundred times. Like my, I asked my husband, I, I was so unsure of if my brain was just making this little tiny hard spot up. I wasn't stressed out, like I wasn't immediately like this is cancer, but it was weird. And my gut told me to call my doctor. So I called my doctor, a day later I went in for um, a physical exam. And thank God for my OB and that she's a woman. I'm not discounting male doctors. I just feel like women get it from a woman's perspective with their woman parts, you know? Like, I just think that's that's something to consider. She did an exam, she felt it too. So it wasn't just me making it up. She felt this lump and this hard dot. I don't even wanna call it a lump. It was like this hard dot. That's it, that's all I felt. It was just like this minuscule little spot. It was on the lower inner part of my left breast. I, I feel like I have phantom, like, lump feeling still. Like I feel like I always notice that spot. She ordered a diagnostic mammo and ultrasound. I went to go get that and while I was on the table, I remember looking over at the screen and I saw, I, I saw the lumps on the screen and I didn't ask her during the whole thing. I want her to focus on what she's doing. So I, I allowed that time, went and got the radiologist afterwards. I already had my mammogram at this point. And when I spoke to the radiologist, when he came in, he pretty much blamed it on breastfeeding. He's like, this is built up debris from the milk in your ducts. Um, you also have really dense breast tissue from your mammogram that we saw. And while we do recommend you having a six month follow-up because of these, of these reasons, you came in for um, a suspicious lump in your breast and you have dense breast tissue, you have to come back in six months for a follow-up. But don't lose sleep over it. Go on about your lives, yada, 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 the whole thing. And I'll never forget that sentence. Do not lose sleep over it. <laughs> if I say this story, if I tell anybody this story, I will never leave out that part. I will never leave it out because it's so prominent in my brain that he said to not lose sleep over it because I didn't. I, w I, I went and got pregnant. <laughs> I, me and my husband had already been talking about having another child and it was just what was going on in our lives. So we just went back to normal. I had scheduled my follow-up and then found out I was pregnant in between then and the follow-up. Oh, son of a bitch. There's a line. I'm fucking pregnant. Oh my God. Oh I'm going crazy right now. I just want, you know, a healthy baby and like it just made me lose control. I got you a little something. Oh, are you gonna have a donut for a second? Donut! Donut! Okay, that looks okay. Does it? You don't like it? No, I like it. Look at your donuts. Are you serious? I'm serious. 
it wasn't until I, I received a positive pregnancy test that I kind of had a little nervousness come over myself where I honestly like, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but I kept seeing like metastatic breast cancer commercials and things that just like made me think about cancer. I don't know how else to put it. I wasn't thinking about cancer until this time and it's almost like, I don't know, something like my gut or there was like something that wanted me to, to think cancer. I don't know. I was nervous going into this second test, I think because I was pregnant and I, and I guess my, I was right to be nervous because I went back, they're basically like, this grew, we want to do a biopsy. They actually made me stay in the building and do the biopsy that day because I was pregnant. Um, there was some talk about not doing the mammogram because I was pregnant, but apparently there's data now that ultimately led to me having another mammogram. So I had another mammogram, I had a biopsy, they actually messed up on the biopsy because the clips weren't placed and I had to do the whole thing over again. It was super cool and it wasn't cool. I'll never forget either, when I was getting my biopsy, the radiologist was talking about she was talking about cancer. <laughs> she brought up like, if it's like a cyst or if it's like stage zero cancer. And like when I, when she said that, like I, I never, like I wasn't listening after that. I just was like, wow, this is, is she, like I, she wasn't saying I had cancer. She was just talking about hypotheticals, but I think hearing it was alarming to me, you know, because of how I already felt with the commercials and all that stuff. It was just like another, another like, another jab about cancer. And after that I was very, I was stressed because I was pregnant and I was, I was very nervous. Um, and then on March 8th, 2021, I got the call and I was told that I, it was all of the biopsies came back cancerous and I was in the car, I remember I went to, I plopped my son in the car, I was sitting in the driver's seat, I hung out for a minute because I was tired, I was sick from pregnancy, um, and I got the call while I was sitting there. And when I answered it, she was like, are you sitting? And I was like, son of a, I was like, damn it, like this is gonna be cancer. Like, <laughs> you know, like it's the cliche, like are you sitting down because I'm about to deliver, I'm about to deliver a truckload of crap <laughs> to you, you know? And, uh, so she said it was cancer and I don't, I don't know how to describe the feeling that came over me. Um, shock, uh, numb, uh, scared, but also wanting to know what I have to do next. You know, it was just like so many emotions, but also like I wasn't, addressing any of them, I was just like, okay, what do I do? Tell me what I need to do, I don't even know. I don't even know the next steps. And the radiologist who did my biopsy was the one who called me with the results and she was amazing. Um, and thank God for her because she ultimately led me to my breast surgeon who was an angel. Love her so much. She changed the whole trajectory, I think, of my experience going forward. Anyway, the radiologist gave me kind of like a rundown of what's going to happen next that I have, the, the surgeon that I call kind of has to schedule me within so many hours. Um, I think it was like within three days they need to get me in for an appointment. But, so that happened. I, I called the surgeon, I scheduled an appointment, and then I waited for three days without any information. All I knew was that there was cancer in my chest and that's it. Uh, Monday, so yesterday was March 8th, finished my seventh week of pregnancy, which is cool. And also was told that, you know, my biopsy of my breast came back abnormal and that I was cancerous. So I was told that I have cancer. And saying that just, just like doesn't feel real. Um, like I know it's a reality, but it just doesn't feel real. Um, I've been emotional yesterday was tough you know it was just like a shock and I 
you know, what stage is it at, or do I need more time and more tests to figure that out? What could be a plan of attack? Like, I had no information, just was told that it was cancerous. Like, that's le that's legit it. So, obviously, being pregnant and, or not, but, like, being pregnant, I, I, a lot of things went through my mind. Kyle and I were just processing yesterday, even today, like, still just processing all, like, which is very emotional and, like, sick to my stomach about it, to be honest, and... Um, Thursday I have an appointment with a breast surgeon. <laughs> it just is wild. Like, I'm just nervous of what, what's going to come next because obviously like something's gonna happen, whether some kind of treatment, whether it's surgery or do I, like, what's gonna happen with the baby? Do I have to wait for treatment? Like, because of the baby, like, what the f is going to happen next? So that has me, like, very much, like, uneasy. Am I even going to find anything out on Thursday? It's just, like, so many questions going through my head. Like, I just, is it, I want to know how bad it is. That makes me, like, wonder, like, what, what kind of, like, where, what stage it's at. Like, has it spread? Like, I'm terrified. Um, I just don't know what to expect. Those three days were hard. It was hard for me, it was hard for my family, because um, we were left with our imaginations and the unknowns. And while even with um, facts about your cancer, there are there's so many unknowns at that point anyway. Um, so without even knowing anything and just knowing cancer was there, it was it was a really really hard tough day tough three days of waiting to get to see my breast surgeon and. I was also pregnant and I wasn't sure what I was gonna be recommended. I just remember surviving those three days. I just remember not feeling well and surviving and life feeling very heavy. Um, so those three days pass. I'm like getting emotional right now. It feels like forever ago and also like yesterday, but I am not the same person I was at that time, so it's like I'm thinking of somebody else. You know what I mean? Or like I almost feel like my old self within, you know? <laughs> it's like so dramatic, but it's such a weird feeling. I can't even describe that. I went on, went and met my surgeon. Me and my husband were there, and she gave me the rundown. Immediately, she I was met with grace and knowledge and compassion and um, facts and evidence and all the things that you would want I met I was met with with my breast surgeon she was an angel she immediately told me that I don't have to terminate the pregnancy if I don't want to and that was such a relief that was huge for me because I obviously didn't want to do that it's the answer I was hoping for that she she had the evidence that there's ways to tackle this without um, without any termination of any sort so she immediately went over the details of the cancer that we knew, um, invasive ductal carcinoma, I had some DCIS in there, it was hormone positive, HER2 negative, and it was like two, it was 2.5 centimeters uh, and like scattered. There was a lot of like calcifications. Uh, and that's all we knew at the time. Oh, grade two. So grade two is like, there's grade one, two, and three. I was right in the middle, so it wasn't slow, slow growing cancer, but it wasn't like super aggressive cancer. I was really focused in this appointment. I, I remember just w wanting to know everything and take it all in and be present. And I really did my best to try hard. And I think in doing so, I really shut down a lot of emotions that were there. And, um, you know, I met those emotions later. You don't worry about that. <laughs> I definitely did. Um, but it was I was able to be present. And within that next week or two, things hit the fan, you know? I was at this doctor, that doctor, you know, everything so fast. So from the time I met my breast surgeon, the next day I met my oncologist, the next day I did, I don't know, went to some other doctor. <laughs> like, I just was going and going and going. The plan of attack for, because I was pregnant, was that we would do surgery first and wait till I was 12 weeks. So we were where I was like just kind of out of the first trimester. That was scary too because I had to just sit there with cancer in my body growing 
and it was hormone positive and I was pregnant. So in my brain, I was like, there is going to be a lot of growth in this cancer happening from now until I have surgery because the hormone factor, that's what, that's the where my brain was thinking. But, um, I trusted my doctor. We waited to the 12th week to have surgery. Did the prophylactic. It turned out I also have, I also have a PALB2 genetic mutation. So I, immediately wanted a prophylactic mastectomy of my other breast, but because I was pregnant, we didn't do that. We were gonna wait till later. So I only had a single mastectomy while I was pregnant. Within that surgery, they did an axillary node dissection, and because I was pregnant, they only used a specific dye. Um, there is, there's like a blue dye and like a radioactive dye or a radioactive like substance they use to do the sentinel node biopsy. We didn't use the blue dye, we used the other one because I was pregnant, that was, that was safer in pregnancy. Anyway, they found cancer in the sentinel node biopsy. Awesome, not awesome. Because of that, while I was under for the mastectomy, they also took out more lymph nodes. 21 lymph nodes were taken out. Seven of them in total were positive. I haven't talked about this in a while. <laughs> I woke up from my mastectomy and uh, I immediately, or I immediately asked, I was, I asked, the nurse, I don't even remember who it was. I just knew I asked some kind of staff member. I asked my husband, I asked whoever, I don't even remember, whoever was in front of me, is it in the lymph nodes? Is it in the lymph nodes? Is it in the lymph nodes? And I remember nobody telling me. I remember, um, I remember that it was shitty. <laughs> I remember like knowing, but no one would tell me, if that makes sense. Like the, I, th I think they were obviously like no one wanted to give me misinformation and they wanted to wait for the doctor to tell me but also tell me you know like that was that was a little tough uh but my plastic surgeon came in and told me that I had <sighs> I needed a second because that moment was huge that was a big moment in my experience you know um, finding it out, finding out that it was in the lymph nodes was a heavy hit. And even then I wasn't, I just, I knew there was chemo. I knew there was radiation and I knew I was pregnant. So it was a lot. It was so much to take in. And I was really, you know, I was going into the surgery praying to God that it wasn't in the lymph nodes. So I would potentially not need chemo. Now I say potentially because I could have still had chemo, but there was a, a chance that then they got in there and there wasn't really that much cancer and like the information they had about it would lead them to maybe putting off chemo or not needing it at all and just having the surgery. So it was scary. You know, I had, I was 12, 13 weeks pregnant. I can't do radiation when I'm pregnant. That's an, like, that's a hard stop. Um, chemo was on the table and if I wasn't pregnant I would have been scared of chemo you know I would have done it but not knowing what to expect and the stuff that I did know about chemo I didn't want to do it you know I just I didn't want to do it and then I had a child in my belly my daughter and then also going through the recovery process of healing from the mastectomy was hard. I had the three drains from one breast because of the axillary node dissection and I did have a hard time healing. Um, I also think I was emotionally going through some stuff at the same time. So it was just like this, it was a tough couple days after surgery. It was a lot. And you know, we got through it. Uh, ultimately the plan, just really briefly, the plan going forward was to start chemotherapy Four weeks after my surgery, I was about 16 weeks pregnant when I started chemotherapy. Basically, I would be doing chemotherapy, ACT, adriamycin cytoxin, and taxol chemo pretty much until I was delivering my child, my daughter. And yeah, I'm going to leave it there because there's a lot more to talk about. I'll talk about chemo, the rest of chemo and the rest of my treatment while I was pregnant in the next video. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it there.